Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Yikes. Today, we have our very special, very first guest, Emily Bowie. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> and we are going to talk about fashion failure. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it's going to be really exciting. You say, oh, goodness, but, like, you picked this topic. I did pick this topic, but it's, like, it is something interesting, but, oh, goodness, like, have we ever failed? Yes. The okay. answer is yes. <laughs> do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? How about you go first? Okay. Jump off yours. So, my mom hates the way that I do my hair. Like, hates it, does not trust me to do it. She's coming for Murphy Induction today, and she texted me ahead of time. She was like, bring a hairbrush so that whatever you do with your hair, I'm probably going to have to redo it. Like, she does not trust me. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> at least a little bit. To like, be fair, you're coming from dance, so who yeah, knows I'm, what's going to happen. I'm going straight from dance to Murphy, so it's going to be... A little bit wild. I'm gonna like have it up and then like throw it back down. I don't have like a straightener or anything to bring with me, so like it's gonna be. Do you need mine? I think I, mean, I could bring mine, but I can't understand. Like I don't think there's anywhere that I could use it. I don't know where your mom's planning on doing your hair. She's probably just gonna be like, oh, whatever you did, it's terrible. Like let me just <laughs> just sitting outside Trishman fixing your hair. It's like oh, we need to do photos now. Sorry, one sec. Excuse me, Madam Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Madam <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> Do you think the Murphy will be there? The Murphy family? I mean, like, they're paying to send us to other countries. Like, maybe. That'd be really chill if we got to meet them. I feel like if I got to meet them, I wouldn't know what to say. I would just be like, wow, you are very wealthy. Hello. Thank I just, you. I would just say hello. and thank you. <laughs> Like, I guess you're just supposed to kiss a lot of butt if they show up. I'm not treating like normal people. I'm really bad at kissing. <laughs> I'm really bad at kissing butt. It's just like, no, I'm just going to be normal. It's fine. I'd probably be horrible meeting someone famous, honestly. I feel like the there are several famous people who I would, like, freak out if I met them. Like, I am obsessed with Cersei Lannister, like Cersei Lannister. Who's that? From Game of Thrones? I do the not watch who, Game of Thrones. The lady who plays Cersei Lannister, Lena Headey. I, like, she's the love of my life. I'm obsessed with her. And sp getting back on the fashion topic, she, like, all three of her... Ch children this lady so, spoilers by the way spoilers game of thrones but she loses all three of her children they're all dead oh okay. and like her whole plot point like she's supposed to be this evil person but she loves her kids so much and that's her like defining like the thing that makes her an okay person uh -huh. but now they're all dead <laughs> well that's great so now like all of her hair is chopped off and she wears only all black like all the time and she used to be dressed like really attractive but now she's like people aren't into her anymore because she's just like in all black and like very serious looking and like conservative and like I'm still here for that I like she's her short hair long hair like I don't care she is the love of my life she's making a <laughs> statement I can appreciate that like that's not bad there are people all over this campus that like their fashion sense it's so off the wall and normally I don't think it would work but it does and I'm like how do you do it how Someone actually was telling me the other day about how some people on this campus, it's just like they have their own sense of style. It's almost like a Hendrix sense of style. Yeah. And I don't know exactly what that means, but it makes sense. Fashion at Hendrix is so different from, like, anywhere else. Like, I got mm -hmm. here and I realized, like, nobody wears bras for one This thing. is true. A lot of people don't. I can't. I can't. It hurts. It hurts too much not to wear a bra. I have size G boobs and I still just, like, don't sometimes. Like, my mom, I'll not wear one around the house. And my mom was like, Madison, I'm like, I'm from Hendrix. You sent me there. You did this to me. You signed <laughs> up for this. My brother went there, but of course she didn't experience that because he's a boy. He wouldn't wear bras anyway. But, like, honestly, I love it because, like, you can show up to class wearing, like, bright purple lipstick and, like, nobody thinks twice about it. Like, no, nobody cares. It's awesome. And especially, like, when I first got super into makeup, mm -hmm. like, I could just do whatever I wanted to with my face and just go, and nobody would look at me and care. Right. But, like, now that we're four minutes into this tangent... Um, <laughs> About makeup and fashion and the fashion of Hendrix. <laughs> I am going to tell the story that I was going to start with. Okay, what was that? Okay. So I was the lead... In the Hendrix play last year, or well, like right. one of the theater productions. When you were me. I played Emily Book. Hey, look. AKA Emily Bowie. Hey, <laughs> that's me. In, in, a, in a nutshell. 
Oh I God, did I base fly. part of my characterization on you, except she does have superpowers and she does fly on like the real Emily Bowie. Of children. <laughs> yeah, she also killed a bus full of children, but like that's a story for another day. Side note. <laughs> Seven side note. But wait, wait, what does this lead to? Okay, so everybody involved with the show did their own hair and makeup. Like right. we had costume people, but like hair and makeup, you're on your own. Like you're oh. doing it. Except for Jenny. Who, like, she has to bleed at one point. So other people, like, took care of the blood bag for her. But that was it. So I was supposed to do my own hair. And my mom was, like, not having it. (laughs) Like, she even asked beforehand. She was, like, who's doing your hair? Do I need to be there? And I'm, like, mom, chill out. Mom shows up. She lives an hour away from our college. Oh, um, yeah, that's close. And she shows up an hour early. Because we have, like, an hour of rehearsal. And then we have the show. She shows up an hour early. Every single day for show week so that she can do my hair. She goes in. She does my hair. She sits in the lobby for an hour. I remember. I sat with her one day. The day I went to see your show, I found her out there in the lobby. I was like, what are you doing here? She's like, well, I came early to do Madison's hair. I was like, what? There was one day that she got there like a little bit late and wasn't able to do it. So I did my own braid. Mm -hmm. And she was like... I was so scared during the whole show that your braid was going to come out. And I was, like, worried, but it didn't come out. And I'm like, Mom, I, I know how to do it. I can do a braid. I'm like, 19. I've taught myself how to do hair a little bit. Yeah. But, like, still every time I see my mom, she's like, no, let me let me fix that. <laughs> you raised the true dance mother. Oh, yeah. That's like, what you've done. You did this. I decided to get into dance pretty late, and my mom was, like, not interested in being a dance mom, even a little bit, but I, like, dragged her in there, and now I think it's, like, my fault. But also, it runs in my family, because over Thanksgiving break, my grandmother, like, my mom's mom, had a heart attack, and she was in the hospital, Mm -hmm. and my great-grandmother, her mom, comes to visit her the day after, and she's like, oh, I need a hairbrush, like, somebody do my hair, because she's gonna... Be mad if my hair isn't done right. I'm like, you just had a heart attack. You're in a <laughs> hospital. What? This, this is, yes. <laughs> this is mother syndrome. You know, I would be in a hospital bed and my mom would be the one who comes in and goes, I got a hairbrush. Your hair is a mess. She would do that. And I love her, but it's like, please leave my hair alone. She's always the first one to tell me, like, you need to you, grab a hairbrush. Fix your hair. Fix That's your what hair. happened to me when I was in the hospital. I was there for like three days. And my mom came to visit during visiting hours every day. And the first thing she would do would be like, where's your hairbrush? Like, let me, let me fix your hair. <laughs> Who am I trying to impress? Let me <laughs> no one. Trying to meet a, meet a hot nurse, apparently. That's hot what nurse. we're trying to do here. They were all female, too. Like, the only male that I ever saw was, like, this 60-year-old guy who was my doctor. And that was it. Because I was, like, in women's only. So, like, there are no dudes anywhere. And one of the girls in there... Somehow, like, she was talking about how she met this guy, and they, like, hooked up. I'm like, we're in an all-female unit. You you can't leave. Why are you meeting these people? How did you find him? Like, I don't understand. But anyway, your turn. Story time. Um, My story time. Oh, what was it? Oh, okay. So this is more of a general circumstance for me that I found myself in in quite a few occasions where I am really bad at figuring out the line of when it's too much for an event or if it's too little. I'm one of those people where I can't half-ass anything. So either I'm going all in and it may be over the top, but I definitely did, I got to the line, or (laughs) I just don't at all. Either that means I don't go or it's just completely off the wall in the opposite direction. It's like, what are you doing? You did not dress up enough for this. So I I usually prefer to go too much. I usually prefer to go too much because then at least I met the line at some way. But there have been so many occasions where it's like I just showed up with a full face of makeup and a dress that was too fancy, and they're like, whoa, that's a lot. I'm like, thanks. I know I look great. That's the only response right now <laughs> because I don't want to hear anything else because I know I don't know what the line is, and I have no sense of it, and it's fine. It's fine because people don't give me good definitions of what to wear so it's like for this murphy thing i don't know i was like well i'll wear a nice dress why not is it gonna be but like do i wear an everyday cloth dress do i wear an easter dress do i wear something fancy fancy i don't know they didn't really specify they expect me to get by with like a two-word definition of the dress code and i'm like half the time i end up googling it most of the time i end up googling like what is semi-formal 
business casual. What is what is all of these things? What constitutes an outfit that would be appropriate for this? I have no idea. This has always been the case. I'm afraid this is always going to be the case. I'm going to be overdressed for my funeral, honestly. Ugh, well, for your funeral, somebody else dresses you, right? Because you're dead. Like, I was, I'm reading this book, but it's like a comic book, but like intellectual, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? And like, she grew up in a funeral parlor and she's like drawing the funeral par- parlor because her dad works there. And they have like a picture of like, I don't know what they called it, like burial wear or like coffin wear or something, but like it's what you put the bodies in. Okay, but why don't you dress them in like, isn't it supposed to be like you get dressed in your favorite clothes or whatever, something like that? I feel like a lot of people do that, but some people, like, they want to have the option, I guess. But it looked like nightgowns. Like, it was not attractive or fancy at all. Which I guess you don't want, like, a sexy corpse, but, like, still. (laughs) Jeez. That's horrible. (laughs) I don't know. What is the proper attire for a corpse? How did we get to this? What is the proper attire for a corpse? Uh, I mean, whatever you want, I guess. I mean, I you're going to be in it forever. Like, literally forever. I'm sure there are some extra people who are like, I'm, I have a suit that I'm going to be buried in when I die. And it's a specific suit I will only wear when I die because I'm going out with a bang. And then there's other people like, I'm going to be comfortable for the rest of my life. I'm going to PJs. So, like, do I have to make a decision? Do I need to include that in my will or something like that? Like, how, does, how do you coordinate that? I don't know. I mean, if you don't choose your family shoes, like, my dad was cremated, so we didn't worry about it, because he, it, it's ash, it doesn't matter. My parents want to be, well, my mom for sure, but probably my dad too, wants to be cremated, so I don't have to worry about them, which is nice. <laughs> I just have to worry about all the cremation costs, because that's so expensive. But, like, otherwise, that's, I've never really thought about that, because, you know, when you go to a funeral, you're not really paying attention to their clothes. Yeah. I hope. I hope you're not sitting there judging their clothes. That's ridiculous. Don't. Ew. Why? Oh my god. Can you imagine somebody getting back from a funeral and being like, they're clothes. Oh my I god. hate that color on you. Why okay. did they Why did they dress them in that? It looks horrible. They're dead, Sharon. We could do funeral fails. I have funeral <laughs> fail stories. Uh, really? I don't know if I've been to that many funerals that I have any fails. I will tell you after this podcast because I don't want to speak ill of the dead right now. <laughs> And we both knew her, but like I went to her funeral and it was, it was a wild time. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think that I would make, I would wear that dress that makes me look like Phoebe from Friends. I would get buried in that one. You know what I'm talking about? No. Which one is that? It's like, it's got flowers on it and it's like got lace sleeves. Like I showed it to Lane one time and he was like, I'm pretty sure that Phoebe from Friends wore that in an episode. Nice. Like, that's, it's that's, so the, that's the inspiration. That is the inspiration. I feel like that's the proper vibes for when you're dead. Yes. And I feel like she would definitely appreciate that so much. She she would so often talk about death and she's so nonchalant about it. It's like, yeah, totally. She definitely see Phoebe would be the person who would have the clothes that she plans to be buried in, like planned out, set out somewhere special in her closet with a sticky note on it that said, by the way, when I die, <laughs> bury me in this. Whenever like I'm taking a creative writing class. Yeah. And they were, like, communicating, trying to communicate, like, the violence of this town that she's writing about. And so she was writing about this specific, like, little girl. Mm -hmm. And so many people that she knew have been killed that she has a dress picked out for when she gets buried. She's like, I'm going to get buried in this dress. I mean, it's not the worst idea in the world. Yes. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's It's a weird idea to have. I don't know if it's necessarily good or bad. But, you know... Oh, another fashion failure one is, like, how do you know what to dress to wear to a wedding? Not white is the like, answer. Yeah, not white, but I don't know. Like, you don't want to overshadow the bride, and some people get picky. Like, you can't wear the same color as the bridesmaids either. Some weddings are specific like that, and that can be. And a lot of people put the colors in their invitation. They want you to, like, dress in the colors. See, I've never had that. I've always been have to figure it out. Like, I have to ask my mom, and she's like, well... It looks like it might be this, and it says this, so I think you'll be safe with this, but we're trying to match as a family, and I'm like, well, crap. Did you see that picture? Like, this woman 
got, she wore like a totally normal looking dress to a wedding and people were so cruel and horrible to her about it. I remember that. I do remember that. That was crazy. I was like, what is wrong with this? You're fine. Cause she was like super in shape and they were like, you look hot. Like you're out hotting the bride. You're out hotting the bride. <laughs> look, if someone, if one of my friends shows up to my wedding and they're looking great, I'm going to be like, dang, awesome. Thank you. Let's get a pic. <laughs> but that's all that's gonna happen. I don't care if you out hot me. That happens on a daily basis. Okay, we have made it to the 15 minute mark. Ooh, what happens now? It is time for the segment. Segment is the word that I was looking for. Our next segment. <laughs> that word. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that we're going to give y'all fashion advice. But don't actually follow this advice because she's going to ask me a question. I can only respond with really horrible, terrible advice. You ready? Okay. Let me think. I want to, I want to, I asked you a question earlier and I think I'm going to ask a little bit of a different one because that one was funny, but I want something more. So let me think here. What if I was going mini golfing, like, but it's glow in the dark mini golf. Glow in the dark mini golf. Okay, so like remember when we were little and we bought those like glow in the dark watches and stuff? Yeah. I think that you should have a dress specially made mm -hmm. out of like that material. Super tight, like mermaid style dress, mm -hmm. but like where it flares out, just like do it at the ankles and make it like really wide. You know what I'm talking about? So like you can only walk like, like you're shuffling. Oh. <laughs> so wait, does it need to be tighter around the ankles then? Because I have to. If I'm shuffling around. Yeah, it's tight around the ankles, but it okay. flares, like, for your feet. So oh, so like a, okay, mermaid style. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. I see this. Really big heels and, like, long sleeve it tight at the butt. So, like, you can barely, like, move. Literally wiggling around like a fish. Wiggling around like a fish. Just have, have him roll you down the golf cart. The the golf course. course gets ended up used as a golf club because I literally can't move at all. But oh, you're glowing in the dark. But I'm glowing in the dark. You definitely wouldn't lose me. He's gonna be <laughs> wowed. <laughs> I need glow in the dark makeup with this, I assume. Yes. You're gonna be mm. he's gonna have his eyes on you the whole time. He won't be able to look away. I'm gonna look like a glow stick. <laughs> <laughs> a freaking glow stick. I'm setting you up for a golf date Clearly. tonight. With, with the glow stick dress that I'm making you the dress. <laughs> I'm getting you a Tinder account. Oh no. We're no, going for it. Not Tinder. <laughs> Finding you a boy. Yes, find a boy who's interested in dating a glow stick. <laughs> I'm literally going to take a picture of a glow stick and be like, <laughs> date <This> me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those, those profiles that I see sometimes that pop up random on Twitter and it's just like a fake. Uh, joke profile and it's mm -hmm. the most random stuff and it'll be like I don't know if they're actually looking for anyone they really just wanted to be able to take a photo and put that up like yeah someone actually went on tinder with this profile and those crack me up every time I've literally considered making a tinder profile but instead of for dating it would just be like hey give me money <laughs> like, that would be an interesting concept it's like tinder but you're trying to get matched with businesses who will fund you yeah yeah, like or like with scholarships or something that will fund you. Like you can put yourself out there for scholarship matching. Yeah, you could get like trying to get them to appeal, and they'll try to sw try to get them to swipe right right for you and give you money. I've heard of those sites that are like women who want money sign up to like find men who will give them money, but it's like a sugar daddy kind of thing, and you have to like actually meet them. I'm not interested. Yeah, in I'm not sure I'm interested in that. I don't want to like. An actual, like, I don't want you to touch me. I just want, like, money. You know? Yeah, I just want you to give me money. Exactly. That's and there are totally people on the internet it. who will do that. Like, you just have to find them. Yeah, it's just about finding them. They don't, they don't put themselves out there enough. Honestly, it's more exhausting than a regular job. Like, I feel like I would rather work than, like, just find. It's so much. Well, like, with finding scholarships was so exhausting in and of itself. Oh, my God. I'm like, horrible. it was stressful. That was horrible. I hated doing that. And they make you wait forever. Mm -hmm. I had to stop at some point. My mom's like, why don't you apply for more? And I'm like, you don't understand how tired. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm so tired of it. I applied for one of those scholarships. Like, I tried applying. Mm -hmm. And it was scholarships specifically for people who have, like, lost a parent. And so I tried to, like, write about my dad, and I just, like, had a breakdown in the middle of it. And I was like, this is not. Bad idea. That was too soon. That was too soon. Yeah. And I feel like having your having the people write about it 
might not be the best idea. Because, like, you have to be, like, this much over the death of your parents in order to get this money. It's, like, not... I feel like that would be more maybe if, like, you lost a parent maybe when you were a kid or something and you've had time to, like, I don't know, internalize it to a degree. But with you, that was still so fresh. It still is so fresh. Like, I don't know. Everyone takes that grief in differently, I think. So, but I don't think it ever gets easier to write about that. Back to fashion. Back to fashion. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We're we're just about done. So what is your final, I want you to give a final piece of bad advice to our listeners. Me give a final piece of bad advice? Yes. Okay, do I have a scenario? Just in life in general. Just in life in general. Oh, I'm bad at giving bad advice. People always come to me for good advice. Bad advice when you feel lonely and you really just want a boyfriend going back to your ex. That's not fashion related at all. Okay. I want you to say how to be fashion related. What does it be fashion related? Um, okay. Wear white after Labor Day. Oh screw, my the, God. screw the fashion rules. It's perfect. Who I cares when you. I do wear white after Labor Day. See, it's perfect advice. And a lot of people would tell me that it's bad advice. Or if you're over 35 and wearing mini skirts, go for it. If you're comfortable in it, by all means. If I've learned anything at Hendrix, is that no one cares. No one cares. No like, one cares. And if anybody cares besides like your mom about what you're wearing, like you you don't need that negativity in your life. No, and your mom's gonna care anyway. Yeah. And it's it's fine. The people who care the most about what you're wearing, it's it's like I love you and it's nice that you care, but this is what I'm wearing. Yeah. Because admittedly it's your you have to see it. It's like but. this reflects on me, you know? Well, it, it doesn't really to that much. I mean, I don't think it does. They think I think they think about it too much. All right, are you ready for my terrible piece of fashion advice? Oh, give it. I always go up, like, more formal than what you need. Yes. Go down in mobility. Like, the more... the more formal, the less you can move. Right. Wear heels at all times, Mm -hmm. but don't learn to walk in them. How do you not learn to walk in heels after wearing them so long? Be carried. Carry, (laughs) have someone carry you everywhere. Ah, there's, there it is, ride a horse or something. Short skirts, tight dresses to every dance class, acting audition. I've literally made that mistake so many times. To wear short skirts and heels? Yes, I'll like wear them to an acting audition and be like, okay, we're gonna do warm up stretches and like, kill me. Like, this was a terrible idea. Like, I Bally did it flats. at Sparrow Auditions. Oh. I did it again. And, uh, <laughs> I did it again. I, I didn't learn the first time. I did it again. The last audition I went to, I was in, like, a short skirt. And they were like, okay, now bend over and touch the floor. And I'm like, this is great. This is fun. I made good decisions up to this point. I make good decisions, I promise. <laughs> and that's the moral of this podcast. Make good decisions. Make good decisions. Wear a short skirt. <laughs> Wear a short skirt. <laughs> and Always. Heels. And heels. Always. And when in doubt, glow, glow sticks. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, yikes. Tune in to our next episode. I'm not sure when, because this is a show about failure. Are so... you hearing yikes? What? You said watching. Hearing yikes. <laughs> There's another failure for you. We can't think about words. <laughs> we're doing so well talking about failure that we're failing in real time. Well, yeah, I made that mess up earlier. It's totally fine. All right. Tune in to our next show at some scheduled point. We will see you later. Bye. Bye.